Elizabeth, tell us about your experiment. What is the core of the technology and what is its uniqueness? Uh, what our company is doing differently, uh, how we're trying to tackle disease, is by tackling biological aging. So biological aging is at the root cause of the diseases that we die of in old age. So anything from heart disease to cancer to kidney failure, dementia, Alzheimer's. This is all our cells getting old, behaving old, not cleaning up the damage anymore. So we've targeted two gene therapies that will actually help cells behave young. And it does work. It works in cell culture. It works in animals. Uh, one of the gene therapies we're working with is actually already in humans and in clinical studies with a different group. So we're very excited about bringing these therapies because it actually for the first time will give us the advantage of working at the problem that's happening at the core level of the cell that's causing the diseases that are killing us and maybe we'll be able to eradicate several diseases at one time. That's uh, completely changing the paradigm of, of how we die and therefore how we live. What's the price of the technology today? Right, so right now if you look at companies going through regulatory uh, regimes in the US and in the EU, uh, the price on gene therapies are about a million and a half or more dollars. Our company is focused on uh, creating the pipeline that brings those costs down significantly. So right now they're very expensive therapeutics and vastly that goes into making the product itself. But when we get a handle on this, we'll be able to get a product out so cheaply, so, so uh, as such a low cost that most of the world, if not all of the world, hopefully all of the world will be able to afford it. So it sounds like affordable technology, it sounds like affordable treatment, but you don't have the raw numbers yet. No, we don't have the numbers yet, and it's going to take us several years to drive them down. It's much like building the supercomputer. So when they built the supercomputer, it cost millions of dollars. And look at your yeah. phone. Your yeah. phone has more technology. Uh, it has uh, the ability to do more things than the first supercomputer did, and it's predictable. So we want to bring the world a predictable product. We can't do that in five years unless we start today. So that's what we're out doing. We're marching on the world and asking the whole world to take down their borders, to take down the barricades and work together to solving this very big problem. Do you think that people are ready to accept the rejuvenation of this kind? Uh, absolutely. As a matter of fact, we see that in the numbers. If you tell someone, if you challenge them with what would it be like to live young when you're 100, uh, you sort of challenge their sensibilities. But if you look at where people spend their money, 80% of what people will spend on medicine will be in the last two years of life, trying to stay alive one extra month. We believe that if we can bring these technologies and people see them working and the effects, that people will accept them quite readily. As long as they know that they have access to them too. People are afraid that just the rich will have access to therapeutics like this. I mean, our company is being very transparent. We're here to ensure that the whole world gets them. What and how do you feel after the treatment? Are there any obvious symptoms of rejuvenation? Well, I feel fantastic. Now, of the telomerase induction, I took a low dose. Uh, so we did see lengthening in my white blood cells, uh, with lengthening of the telomeres, which is uh, fantastic. Uh, it was a small move, but it was a budge nonetheless, and that's something to be excited about. As far as the muscles, um, I have been uh, traveling almost nonstop for months and not able to work out, but uh, you can feel my muscles. I <laughs> yeah, go for it. Ooh. Oh yeah, that's without that's without working out. That's all of me. That's my legs, mm -hmm. uh, my stomach. All of you can take a good poke at me. Um, I feel fantastic, and that feels great. Um, it, these are natural genes. These are genes that you have in your body anyway. It's just upregulating them, so we're not seeing any ill side effects. And I'm enjoying being able to do the things that I used to do, but without the working out to trying to get there. Are there any future researches that take place in this direction? Well, right now, that's what we're doing. We're, we're looking for countries that will offer some regulatory status to us so that we can prove safety and efficacy in a way that the world will appreciate. Uh, we're looking for that uh, investment infusion in order to get these uh, clinical trials done. So even though we're a technology company and not a research company, we still have to go in the human model and prove it the way that we all expect. I want to see the data. I want to see what happens when somebody takes the therapies I did, but 
not just one person, a hundred people. Then we will have a clearer vision of the future for everyone. So we have to do this really important work and we have to run those clinical trials in order to do it. Do you have a lot of volunteers? <laughs> oh yeah, that's a, you know, 90% of the emails that we get okay. um, are people who want to volunteer for clinical trials. But these trials will have to be done much like every other disease. Mm -hmm. We'll separate the therapies. We'll have a protocol. There'll be a specific age and a specific disease that we're, we're trying them against. Otherwise, we won't have clean data. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, uh, clean, maybe some clean, of those people clean, are going to... Clean data means that you cannot, you're unable to make experiments on healthy people? Or? Uh, right. We would not be making them on healthy people. We would pick a certain age group with the same disease, with the similar biomarkers in that disease to see how we can affect it. Mm -hmm. So uh, being patient zero is fantastic, uh, but it doesn't give a lot of data to the world. And because of the way we had to do the therapy, we did it more like a case study than a case clinical study. trial. Uh, now we have to go out and prove in human bodies, in many human bodies, how it works and what the outcome for these many different people. What is the life expectancy through 10, 30, 50 years in your opinion? Well, I would love to be the perfect sales person, and I would love to tell you that we could double lifespan, but we don't know. So we don't know, and probably the true fix, making the perfectly healthy body, will be more than one gene therapy. It'll be more than one cellular technology. It may be a mix of stem cells, monoclonal antibodies, and gene therapies. So right now, we have to wait for the data. But if we're seeing healthier people, if we can create a homeostasis in bodies, uh, bodies that are functioning like youthful bodies, they're clearing uh, junk, they're metabolizing well, the organs look good, the skin looks good, the heart looks good, the brain looks good, everything looks good. I mean, if you're healthy, you know, what do you die of? It is very likely if we can put you into that homeostasis, mm -hmm. we could keep you there for a long time. Uh, those would be great biomarkers to look at. And then we can start projecting how long will this person live. I think that by changing the way you die changes the way you live. So naturally, humans die before the age of 35 of infectious disease. That's how we died before antibiotics and yep. immunizations. So antibiotics and immunizations created a world where now we feed more people than we did before. We have animal rights. We have many um, ideas. We're working on the environment. It's a hot topic these days, the environment. It's because we have time to actually think about these things. We can postulate and predict a future and try to create a better future. Imagine if it seemed like we might have more time. And there's a good question. What are you dreaming about? I really... Uh, would like to see a future where uh, our company had a big success, where we were seeing the effects on human lives, where we looked back at textbooks to have to see what it used to look like to get old, where we could see clearly the decay in getting old and, um, and be glad that we came forward to solve the problem when we did. I'd like to be able to look and see, you know, all of the governments in the world that got behind these new technologies and helped to expedite them. I, I see a world that, that looks very pleasant. We'll still have problems, but that's why we have other industries. Maybe you'll go on to create an industry that deals with sending people to Mars because uh, you want to get a few of them off the earth or something like that. But those are good Open problems population. to have. Yeah, a lot of people ask about that. But, you know, as lifespans increase all the way around the world, it doesn't matter what the religion is, doesn't matter if you'll ever meet them or not, as lifespan increases, birth rates go down everywhere. Uh, the projections for the human population actually after a couple hundred years from now start to curb down. If you look at Japan, they're at negative growth. They're the oldest, longest living uh, people on earth. Mm -hmm. So we have only reason to believe that uh, we have natural balances that we put in place for ourselves and that we will continue to have those. And that children will continue to come, but maybe each child will be taken care of in much a much better way than they are now. Do you have ambitious, um, ambitions uh, to have this technology be implanted in the governmental technologies? Um, Absolutely. Military? If people can feel trusting of the government to give them these sort of gene therapies like immunizations 
and the, the product is clean and the output is exactly what we're looking for, I really hope that governments will get involved and they will uh, create free uh, medicine for people in the future because they save so much money on these diseases if they create a healthy population. So absolutely, but that has to do with trust, and so you have to create the trust there. In the U.S. now, less and less people want to take immunizations. People have become skeptical of taking immunizations, even though historically we can see the benefits of immunizations to the human race. It bumped up our lifespan by, you know, over 20 years. That's huge. You know, there's no other pharmaceutical that has come since then that has done that. We have to create a world of trust and values, and we have to value health. So there are a lot of problems that go on with increased lifespans, but our problem to solve as a company, BioViva's problem, is healthy, healthy people. So how do we create healthy people? You know, how do we eradicate disease? Disease is, is the problem, and that's what we're going at. Do you think that ongoing researches might or will lead humanity to immortality? Okay, there's two ways to look at that. I don't think that there is immortality in the way that most people are thinking, because if you you got hit by a bus, you would die, okay? And like the way immortality has been sold to us, like you can't die. Um, I think the word that you're probably looking for is amortality, that diseases don't kill us. Um, I think that it's possible that we could create a long-lived, very youthful human. Um, infectious disease will always be a problem because the infectious disease mutates rather quickly. Uh, Maybe this is possible. As far as science goes and looking at cells, we've already created what's considered immortal cell lines. So on a scientific level, we've achieved this, meaning cells that continue to replicate healthy cells longer than a human cell should, and that's with human telomerase, one of the gene therapies. Um, as far as, uh, like, again, the regular definition of, like, vampires, I don't, I don't think so. Is the humanity ready to accept immortality? I, I think that that's, that's the, the hard pill to swallow. I think that humanity is ready to accept a life without disease. And I think that's the only step we need to make. Because, again, the other word, immortality, is kind of unachievable. Uh, something eventually will kill you. Um, so... You know, uh, if, we, if we're careful in what we say, uh, we'll get to uh, the closest thing uh, to that reflection sooner. Mm -hmm. And the last question, how does it feel being patient zero? Is it a weight or a blessing? Uh, it's both. Uh, when we first did it, I actually didn't want to say that it was uh, myself that did it because it really uh, took a lot of privacy out of my life. Uh, but we sort of had our hand forced, and so I came forward and said that I did it. And many days are very normal. Um, they um, just average days. I'm in my pajamas, and I don't brush my hair, and just the same thing everyone else does. And um, other days it's uh, quite intensive, and I come under fire, and people have a lot of questions. And uh, But I like it. If, I, if I'm, you know, you, you have to be pretty bold and pretty strong, and, and life chose the right person to do that. I can handle it. Well, thank you very much for interviewing. Good luck. Thanks.